Welcome to the EBFC Show, the easier, better, for construction podcast. I'm your host, Felipe Engineer Manriquez. This show is all about the business of construction. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the world, all the people, Jake's fans included, of the EBFC <laughs> show live stream, we are back again. This time we're battling something that Jake and I have been having non-stop texting fights for about a week ever since we talked about this so we are excited to get this on uh jake let's just go ahead and uh cue cue the stage we've got you know this is the change makers this is all about people that are interested in making change in their lives or at their work or making their work easier better faster or cheaper i mean let's be on brand right there's nothing wrong with that in the case right. one, yeah we have a podcast Jake also has a podcast. Jake, when when does your podcast drop as my ticker tape rolls down at the bottom of the screen? My podcast drops every Sunday right around 4 in the morning, depending on when the powers that be click the button. But uh, it's a weekly thing for the past year. We have one hour worth of content every single week for you to enjoy. Every single week. Yeah, I'm not on that uh, as excellent. I'm not chasing the excellence like to your level. And we're on the, we're on the, the bi-weekly or the every other week, as, as the banner says. I read a lot that says like 15 minutes, but multiple times a week functions better. But I'm like, I literally like soak this up so bad. I could have three hour conversations with people. So I do it for my benefit, not for the audience. Beautiful. So for his benefit, and then let's just stay on his benefit and go ahead and introduce yourself and we'll kick off who is Team Jake and who is Team Felipe. Go ahead, Jake. <laughs> I am Jake Carroll. I'm the funniest lean guy. My role on LinkedIn is to be the ambassador of making this a little more fun, a little more approachable, challenging some nuanced thoughts where there's some rigidity in the industry by uh, poking a little fun at it, offering some alternatives. And that's what I'm here to do today. Yep. And he's also, he's being modest, ladies and gentlemen. He's written a book called Chasing Excellence, which will be featured prominently throughout this as we throw down and show down. And I'm going to say that's Team Jake, and uh, that's that. And my name is Felipe Engineer Manriquez. I am the host of the EBFC show, the easier, better for construction podcast. And if you're wondering, like, what is that show all about? Jake, I'm so glad you asked. I got, I'm ready this time. Watch this, Jake. The EBFC show exists to serve people in the construction industry. Now, we also have people like Jake on the show who are, I would say, deeper into the supply chain. So if you're anywhere... Uh, on, if you're anywhere listening to this, you've absolutely benefited from construction in some way, shape, or form. This technology that we're beaming through you or beaming to you in different ways includes things that had to be built. So just get after it. So as the host of the EBFC show, I get a little more nerdy on Scrum and all things lean. A little more, a little more. <laughs> okay. A lot, arguably a lot more nerdy. So nerdy that I've got this rolling on the bottom of the screen. I think that uh, these are good things to play with, especially if you want to transform how you work every single day. And that's what I like to talk about. And coincidentally, I teach people how to use Scrum in their work as well. So, but that's not what we're here to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are here to talk about meeting people where they are. And uh, Jake's been given advice on this, and I've been given advice on this. And when we were just talking earlier, we could not agree. On, even though we heard the same exact phrasing, we are definitely not on the same place as far as where to be on this side of the coin. So we're going to flip out over onto this. I'll start with just giving a first, I'm going to give Jake a benefit of the one thumbs up that he's thought about this. <laughs> I've given it 10 seconds worth of thought. He's given it some thought and let's celebrate that, but let's go worldwide viewers. Where are you watching from? We want to hear from you in the comments. Where are you in the world? We've got uh, Dr. M all the way from India. He's already I know he's team Jake. I already know he's team Jake. I, I think you might, you might be right there. He might be on the wrong team, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, I think Patrick's in the, unless he's traveling, he's in the beautiful state of Michigan. And so tell us. Uh, oh, Patrick, know. we have to know at the end of this, whether you're team Felipe or team Jake. Yeah, we need to know, Patrick, whose team are you on? But right now you're just telling us where you're watching from. And we've got uh, 
Mark. Hello, Mark. Dan Fauché coming at us from, I don't know where Dan is. He could be anywhere. We've got uh, Texas in the house. Mr. Long. Ah, Dan's in Kansas. Ah, Mark's in Seattle. So we've got the, the West Coast covered. We've got the beautiful West Coast. You know, if you're not connected to Mark, I don't know how much you do or don't know him. He's got something fascinating to comment that's really insightful in the space all the time. Every time he pops up in my feed, I'm like, ooh, ooh. Hear that, Mark. Here. Let's just drop some. Looks like Jake's, Jake's giving some preliminary love, Mark. He's trying to pander to you. I'm trying to get you on Team Jake. That's where I'm trying to end up. I think so. But we got. My friend Jenny in the house from my hometown, Chicago. We got uh, Eduardo in from Michigan, Detroit in the house, Buddy in from Dallas, Richard in from St. Louis. What's up, Richard? We've got Utah in the house. Craig is in in from uh, Hopper, Utah, Memphis, Tennessee. Kirby. Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you in the audience that don't know, Kirby is every LinkedIn user everywhere. She hasn't figured out how to get a name on there. So if there's a thousand of them, they're all Kirby. They're all Kirby. Then we got uh, St. Louis, Missouri in the house. Benjamin, what's up? Oh, my God. Dr. M is already cheating, and he's on Team Jake as of right now. So thank you so much for letting mm, us know. Not cheating. This is what buying is all about, baby. You sell your opinions well, you make it seductive, and then you have fans long before you've even mentioned your statement. Oh, okay, so he's uh, he's been wooing you, Dr. I've been what? wooing half the people in here for about a week trying to make sure. Jake probably still doesn't win this one, but he's really got to press all the buttons possible. Oh, my God, look how funny this is. So we have a, another Kirby, actually, <laughs> but for Texas. I, I love it. I love that. Uh, that I feel like this actually is Kirby. <laughs> right? Like it's gonna be. It's gonna be Kirby. It's gonna be Kirby. This what is, is that Kirby. last name? Is that Coates? Kirby Coates. Kirby Coates. Kirby, Kirby Coates. Coates. If you haven't connected with her, definitely do that. Yeah, definitely uh, find Kirby Coates on LinkedIn and uh, do don't do the follow. Do the connection. <laughs> and so let's go with uh, opening comments. So, okay, we've got uh, we've got the map here. We're gonna go with the map. And we're going to talk about, oh, we got one more person. That's not, it's not too late to bring in uh, what we got here. We got Dave all the way from Greenville, Tennessee. Welcome in, in, Dave. Welcome, Dave. You're in for a treat. So you can, you can choose to be Switzerland, but uh, that's going to get you a lack of points with the, the judges and the team. So we've got the team Jake on the left. Where do you land? We'll talk about that as we do our opening comments. And then we've got uh, team Felipe on the right and we'll be judging it so jake i think let's let's roll back and get those opening remarks and uh, tell me why you think in your words ladies and gentlemen in jake's words i'm taking a stupid stance yes and just so i'm saying something that'll probably get me banned out of this community i hate the term meet people where they are it is insidious to me that someone can try to even assume they have enough experience of just meeting me for the first, second, third time to even try to come to terms with exactly where I'm at. Uh, it's a misleading, uh, easy way for you to fall into your own implicit bias. And you go, well, I'm really good at assessing where people are and, and making somebody out to be stupid or different or categorizing them however you see fit. So if I was going to make an argument to somebody, you know, a leader that reports to me and they think, what are your thoughts on this? I would say instead, consider all the facts and just make the most charitable, appropriate choice possible, which takes a lot of learning and nuance to get into, but a far better outcome than meet people where they're at. That is my stance. Okay, so that stance, I mean, I put, I threw, I thought you were going to go long on this one, Jake Harrell, and I put uh, three minutes on the clock. You still have two, two and a half. You only barely burned up 20 seconds on your stance. So there's some things you need to unpack there. Is, oh, let me let me just give you a whole lot on as I take up the last two minutes. I didn't realize I was given three minutes here. No. We could have reviewed the rules before hitting live, but that's okay. <laughs> so to elaborate on my point, everybody at some point in their life has had a project in which they did not receive the buy-in necessary to achieve the goal. Whether it's personal, if you're married like I am, there's 100 projects a day that I'm not going to get the buy-in I need to achieve the goal. Now, it is a truism, meaning you could always assume this, that when you didn't get the buy-in you need, you could go back and say, well, you didn't meet them where they were at. 
You didn't speak in language enough for them to understand you well enough to see the vision for the future you articulated, and that's why you didn't get the buy-in engineered to see. Is it true? Yes, but it's a truism, and that's applicable to anything that didn't go well. So when you receive this advice, it's generally after a failure of some sort, or it's vaguely given with somebody that doesn't really know how they got in the situation they're in, usually a leader that you report to. They go, well, you just got to meet people where they are. That's a meaningless meaningless endearment that just has the problem of feeling good. It just happens to feel good. You go, meet them where they're at. Meet them where they're at. It makes you sound humble. It makes you sound like you have all this secret humility, right? Where I'm saying that feels good, but it doesn't actually accomplish anything. Right. Nobody can give me a clear, clarifying statement on this is how I met these people where they're at, and this is what got done. There's some examples where people's definition of this get close, and they go, well, I used this English term instead of this Japanese one. Or, well, I presented it in their language instead of mine. Each of those iteratives are fine. In fact, I love that. I love adjusting your language to, to be whatever the, the cultural in-group that you're operating with is. But that's not meeting people where they are. If that's your definition of meeting people where they are, that's solely. And I agree. Yeah, absolutely. You should, you should walk into a circle. And you should probably speak the same slang that they use, the same jargon. If you're with doctors, I expect doctor jargon. If you're with engineers, I expect engineering jargon. If you're not with either, you shouldn't expect either. That's like society 101. But if meet people where are is applied in anywhere on an intellectual, emotional, cultural level beyond that, it just doesn't hold water or create any real value. And Felipe, I believe I'm at my three minutes. Yeah, I think, uh, ah, that alarm clock shows that you're, yeah, you're right on point there. You ended nicely. I'm going to give you some pre boom celebration right there. Oh, there's, there's a boom for you. Okay. So I, I were this, this, this came to me, it was actually as a criticism. So we're not starting at the same point. We are on opposite sides of the spectrum. I actually received meeting people where they are as a criticism during uh, an annual performance review. And, and it, and I took it, you'll decide you audience you'll decide if i took it positively or negatively but uh i just want to give a shout out to enrique i'm going to use some of my time here all the way from guadalajara mexico and uh, we also have uh james in from dallas or as my as i like to call him jim what's up jim and so this was given to me as a criticism saying that i was too intense with uh my approach to things and that i should be more sensitive to where people were specifically in their continuous improvement journey or just in their project management uh, capability and understanding. And I, and I took this from somebody that had their wiser, uh, they had more wisdom and experience than I did at the time. And I thought, okay, how can I make this a positive? And so uh, I didn't get a lot of context on this. So there wasn't any, there wasn't any like uh, anything like negative. Yeah. What's up, Jim? Yeah. You cool. There wasn't anything where people said, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we encourage you to play in the comments like all day long. We will, Jake and I have the ability to to bring you up in. So please keep keep commenting. Please. Descent or ascent as you see fit. Exactly. We're not going to, we're not going to get distracted any way, shape or form. And so taking it as a, as a criticism, like I thought I took it as, okay, maybe my approach is wrong. And by this point I had had uh, one team where I went to deliver something that I thought that they wanted. They wanted a presentation on some, some lean basics. And I'd ended up doing a three hour lecture, totally not meeting them where they were, or even being sensitive to the context of what they wanted to learn. And that happened, you know, luckily early in my continuous improvement journey and experience. And I took, I took that feedback to heart. And you know what? I actually had uh, lunch with that person later, but that's a whole nother story that we'll, we'll divest into at another time. So for me, Jake, meeting people where they are means that I show up with my full capability and spectrum and talent of emotional intelligence, which I was just talking about with uh, Walter and Davis on the Laying Foundations podcast, people. People, check that show out, Laying Foundations podcast. And we were going into detail about how to institute change specifically with the superintendent community and general contractors. And this is where a lot of this comes from. When I'm working, Jake, with people that have lots of experience, often 
decades of experience, especially in the, in the construction profession, you've got a lot of people, you can't just come out guns blazing, even no matter how alluring chasing excellence is. And yes, I will award myself points for <laughs> working that into the conversation. Working your book in is every chance I get, but I think I got about 30 seconds left in my final 30 seconds. I just want to say that, uh, it is important that you use everything at your disposal. And I think it does absolutely matter. There's just the final two things I want to say. There was research done by Herzog a long time ago about what motivates people. And two of the main things that he found was there were internal drivers and external drivers. And when you're doing any kind of change or you're in a leadership position, you have to know what those are for your people. And if you miss it, and you mess up, like Jake said, just to steal from his own argument, you're just going to be in a term of endearment. Like, yeah, you can guess wrong and just try again, or you can not guess at all and make space for people to talk and communicate with you so you can understand them better. So I think that's, that's, I'm dropping the confetti, Jake. That's my opening remark. So ladies and gentlemen, before Jake gets to counter, we're going to be keeping score here and we'll be looking to you in the chat to tell us like how our counterpoints points are landing. We'll be dropping in, for example, when I score on top of Jake, I'll get the point. All the blue pins will be my points and all the. the you can already put me in India. You already know I have one. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to drop you over there, right there in India. Bam. Cause you got your one right there. And I'll just put this. I'm just going to assume that Eduardo is on my side as well. So that's how we're going to score it. But uh, while we talk about that, in the chat, tell us, based on what you've heard so far, whose team are you on? And it looks like Mark's already on. Mark. Jake, what does Mark say? Listen, then tailor your approach, but don't compromise on the facts. I don't know what camp that puts me in. That puts you in my camp, Mark. I don't need to have an individual response to every person to try and meet them where they are and put all this extra effort into whatever. No, listen, accept the facts, and make the most charitable decision possible. That's far better advice than meeting them where they're at. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that, so that's how it sounds. So Mark has demonstrated perfectly how to utilize the chat feature and how he, and he's in on LinkedIn. YouTube, if you're in on YouTube, make a comment. That's how you're going to get into this live. If you're watching this on the replay, Jake and I will respond to your comments. Oh, we will. Yeah, make a comment anyways. And all of you Dallas folks, we need to touch base after this anyways. Yeah. So we're going to say right now that uh, Mark is not in Switzerland. Oh, 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 oh. Mark's not in Switzerland, but the next comment is making me great. It's is making that, me feel so good. Eduardo, Eduardo, Eduardo. Hold on a second. I'm going to give that first point uh, for Mark to you. And He's we'll, in Seattle. Yes, yeah, so we'll put it right there. Bam. So there we got there. Now this next one, we got uh, Eduardo. He's on Team Jake so far. Oh, my God. Oh. Mucho gracias, senor. Como está usted, senor Martinez? Como lo dicen en español o en inglés? Emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta give, I gotta put that uh Guadalajara goes to Jake right now. Oh. <laughs> Let's see who, who else we've got. We've got uh, Mr. Thacker, team horizontal stripes all day. <laughs> That's me. That's me. Oh, and he's all the way in from Baltimore or the, the yep. new... man right now. Know, it, it is a it is a touch unfair that like my best friend in the whole universe is here and in the chats, but okay. dims the dims the chops. So deal yep. with it. Jim, you're calling. I mean, you're you're listening, watching in from the San Francisco Bay Area, Jim. So tell us in the chat uh, where you are. Doctor M just switched. He just came over. To Doctor M, cancel our upcoming event. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you just switched on us. I will be coming out on Doctor M's vlog soon, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. All you right, know? before you get to James, before you get the pin in James, James, let me just get a chance to attack this premise and see if I can. If I can't move you, that's fine. Oh wait, let's let LinkedIn. Let's let Kirby come. No, She's no, on no. the same way. I'm sticking the. Get Jim in. We're getting Jim in. Stick him. Get Jim. Stick a plan in Dallas. All right, I got Texas, baby. Bam! I can't believe you have Texas. I've got Seattle, and you've got Texas. I got Texas in the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, pull up, pull up, pull up, Kirby. Thank you, Jim. 
Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you. We got the is this Kirby Coates. Kirby, where are you at? Yes, she's on Team Felipe. <laughs> Another one. So let me just attack this comment and see if I get any other movers in the audience. So her comment, I'm on Team Felipe so far. I believe you have to follow the platinum rule at all times instead of the golden rule. I like that upgrade. Treat people how they want to be treated in line meeting folks where they're at. So give me a little bit more about what you think meeting folks where they're at. And it's not just for Kirby, that's for everybody in the comments. What do you mean by that definition? Because everybody has a different operating definition. And maybe Felipe, we can agree on a definition. My side. So let me get there. So when I meeting people where they're at, I would say that human beings that you come across at any given time in space and location, anywhere you are on this map, where you come into contact with them, they are at that moment, the culmination of all their experiences, all their biases, as you say, Jake, are included in that. And if you try to circumvent or ignore any of that, I, that's when I think you're crossing the line and becoming disrespectful of the, the magical human being. Let, let me challenge your one point there, because how could you possibly know all of that with a dynamic human being? You can't. And that's why I said in the beginning, in my, in my three minutes at the beginning, you've got to create some space and ask questions to understand. You're not going to get everything. But so let me biases. examine let me examine the null hypothesis here. And let's give you a three-minute timer to just defenestrate this position. Okay. All right. I so no. So on my three minutes, well, I only need 20 seconds. I want you to take three minutes to throw this into the garbage. What can meeting people where they're at possibly, possibly have a better outcome than listening, accept facts, and make the most charitable decision possible? In what way can meeting people where they're at do any better than, than oh, that alternative? I love that you served this up so easily for me. So you just gave me a platitude using your your language. And I had, ladies and gentlemen, I had to look that word up in the dictionary because Jake was using big words contrary to, to the word choice that he claims chasing excellence has. <laughs> Well, well, to, in defense of my point, the argument today is instead of meeting people where they're at, accepting facts, making the most charitable choice possible, I engineered this book to apply to most people. There's not words like defenestration within the book. You're not going to find throwing it out the window. That's all that's a fancy word for within the book. The book is exceedingly simple because it's engineered that way to apply to people. It does not need to meet you where you are at with some specified, tailored, individual, one-on-one -on -one thing. Instead, it is being as charitable as possible to as many people as possible with a facts-based approach. Yeah, I think you're 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 so biased and you're biased that you don't know how biased you are. You just that's so fair. That's oh, that's such a great point. I love that. <laughs> just so I love that. So give me how meeting people where they are end up better, have a better outcome. You said understanding the facts. So our perception is absolutely a function of our ability to perceive things both. I mean, and the facts are shockingly subjective. Like when I got this, this criticism that I wasn't meeting people where I was, in my opinion, at that time, I was already uh, higher than average on emotional intelligence. Thank you, Brent, Brent Darnell, for, uh, for giving me that assessment, not my own assessment. Not my own assessment, but the assessment of someone that I trust that's got time and energy in that space. And still, from other people's perspective, Jake, I wasn't uh, communicating and connecting with people in a meaningful way. So the facts are subjective. It's not always straight reality. Now, a lot of times... Well, well, give me an example of what you changed to better address that. Let's start there. So one of the things that I changed as a result of that criticism is that I started asking more questions because I went from people would make a request. They would say like, I want to do X. I want to catch X. And like uh, Jesse's telling us bias is cubed, you know, biases to the third power. And like, even I have bias, like in my bias, Jake, I think anything is possible. Well, some people that I work with don't share that belief. They don't think anything is possible. In fact, they quite the contrary. They think some things are impossible. So instead of having to jump the chasm from the Atlantic Ocean where, where this pin got incorrectly placed, John Thacker, you might have to jump over the Panama Canal first as you circumnavigate your way around and connect to, to my good buddy, Dr. M, who's got my back. Jesse, we need to hear from you in the comments. Whose team are you on? Because uh, Right? Whose team are you on, Jesse? And you better choose correctly. 
So Jake, Ooh, you- Craig, Craig Johnson comment I love because it's completely against where I sit. And I'll dive into your exact response if I could read that. Let's Meet go. people where they are, great advice, but just like any simplified advice, you need to understand the depth of the phrase. And it's not false humility. If it is, then it's your fault, not the phrases. Team Felipe Far. Thank you very much for that, Craig Johnson. We can respectfully disagree, and I hope by the end of this hour, we find some really strong middle ground. I would argue, to Felipe's point, the thing that he changed after that argument was that he started asking questions. He started clarifying the facts of the situation, and then he just made the most charitable choice against those facts. That's exactly what he did. He said, these people like this, not that. These people like this, not that. These people like this, not that, and made the most giving choice he possibly could. I disagree. So like here, standing in my own skin, I didn't make the most charitable choice. I had a job and a mission to accomplish. And my job and mission was to transform and help people make a change. And sometimes they didn't want the change. If I was going to be the most charitable possible, I would never even get involved. I'd walk away and not be involved with them. But I had an agenda. I had uh, things. Now, let's throw charity up on the board because I think you you misunderstand the, the definition of the term. It is, it is not about being the most like spineless, I'm going to let these guys do whatever just to be nice. Charitable okay. is about doing what's best for that person holistically. And like that's exactly what we set out to accomplish. And the agenda for change is to accomplish that. So it's a key, key milestone in, in being that exact way. Is you want to be as charitable as possible. Facts-based, I have an agenda. How could this agenda to you the kindest, best way we can all absorb the information? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to mark up charitable are both our definitions to Switzerland on that one. So that's not a place where we we disagree. I think we're in the same place with charitable. I'm on the same page as that for charitable, that best for that person at that time. Obviously, if somebody's about to get hit by a bus and you can prevent it, you should if you're so obligated or, or obliged to. But we've got some more people in here. Mr. John Thacker, what are you, what are you talking about? What? <sighs> he said it's baseball over football. Like, no, no, John, you just, no. And uh, Jesse said he's on Team Sexy, which that's is That's me. And it's clearly. That's awesome. me. That's what he calls me. That is me. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Give me Texas, baby. Give me Texas. No, I think uh, Team Sexy is going to go to Switzerland. Jesse, you need to use the actual name. Come on now. <laughs> Who is the Team Sexy? So, okay. Now, who else we got? Uh, we got Dr. I'm coming back in. Understand before you understood. Still with Felipe, that means that pin's getting bigger in Team India. Thank you, Dr. M. Doesn't so you mean you clarified data from the person and then made the best choice possible? That puts that I'm sorry, but you're you're agreeing with me, Dr. M, not not Felipe. Dr. M clearly said, as as marked by this pin, Jake, indisputable that he's on my team. <sighs> You're going to make Dr. M's bigger every time he comments. <laughs> then we got uh, John. Yeah, he's, What's John? Who's John's stance on, Jake? John Martinez. First off, I love that you are here. I Every time I see something from you, my head explodes. Because I started in the same industry doing the same things. Was a team lead as I set out within my career. So thank you very much, John, for being here. And he says, I would have to say I believe meeting people where they're at is great. But asking questions is also I feel taking both, but understanding how to influence those that are open to it. You know how best to influence people? How best? I'm just going to put it out there right now since the rate of acceptance is pretty high up for the industry. You just let them talk, accept whatever they say, apply your secret agenda, Socratically meet in the middle, right? Like that's literally it. Accept the facts, right? Both objective and subjective, and then make the most charitable decision possible. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give John Martinez to Team Jake just because that Dr. M pin is just so menacing. I'm gonna put him right It is. Dr. M's gonna take over the, the Hall of Europe in a second. Put him right here by you. So so John, then we got the Mark coming back in. If someone in a fantasy world, do you help them by joining them in that fantasy? Mark, if the fantasy is good and compelling, yeah, I'm joining in on that fantasy. <laughs> In the real world, no, we don't. So we don't meet them where they're at. We don't. We accept the facts of the situation and make the most charitable thing possible. I totally disagree. I think if the fantasy is good and they're not hurting themselves, I'm going to meet them in that fantasy and we'll still find some common ground and get... But let's say you're making a transformation, right? In a fantasy world, you have your agenda to accomplish. You are going to meet them in the fantasy. That's totally fine. But you're still going to access facts and make the most charitable voice 
most charitable choice possible. Blah, blah, blah. So like, I feel like that's better advice. When a leader says to another leader, meet them where they're at, that's such a meaningless, deep, like you could go write a book on what that actually means, whereas my alternative definition I'm offering you today, you just take and apply. Just take and apply. You only need to know one word, and that's charitable. It's just <laughs> accept facts, make the most charitable decision possible. Do what's best for both people as you can while still moving the agenda in the direction you want it to go. No, I think I think um, I'm disagreeing. You're in conflict there. Like if you're you're moving their agenda, if they didn't reach out to you or they did reach out, in your in your stance where you're taking this really hard stance, are people that mm-hmm. you're with reaching out to you are they voluntarily calling you or are you being parachuted in on them? Oh, ooh, that's a fantastic question because I definitely have scenarios of both. Whether that's I'm being parachuted in by force or whether I'm being asked, hey, come help me with this. So you but, think about that while I read this comment from uh, Valerie. What up, Valerie? Valerie? Whoop, whoop, whoop. That is great to determine if there's a problem. But if you incorporate the people doing the work to create and implement the solution, so I guess it depends on where the problem-solving process you're at. Valerie, I'm going to show you where you just landed, Valerie. You just landed in Switzerland. <laughs> so we got to, you know, you come back in and tell us where, what side you're on. Team Valerie, team. you got You have to let me win you over before the end of this. You just have to. There's no way you can end Team Felipe. I'm going to cry. Yeah, Valerie, you totally know where you need to land, but we'll come back to you in the comments. John, great cue, Mark. Yeah, great cue, Mark. So we got that cue. Great cue, Mark. We'll get down Team there. Jesse. This oh. is Switzerland. Us. He just Switzerland us. Let's, let's, where's he at? Jesse, this is where you just landed. In case it's yeah. not for you, okay? Yeah, you need to make a good decision. Jesse. But my, fa- my favorite comment of the night just popped up. Your favorite? You already have a favorite comment of the entire I already night. have a favorite comment. That's 30 minutes. Good luck topping it. You can, but I don't think it's possible. Yeah. Look at Dr. M. Oh, Dr. M, you just crushed him. Boom! <laughs> crushed me, Dr. M. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna make s- that pen black, make it a little larger. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he just went over to Team Jake, he just went to the dark side, Dr. M. But <laughs> got time, it's gonna win. Uh, <laughs> so, no. we're you're here's your here's your theoretical. Let All me right. throw a theoretical at you, Felipe. You lead a team that leads teams, right? You have middle management in between you and the actual people. Right. You're having this conversation with a guy who didn't get the outcomes he want, or he did, either which way. And you give the advice, you need to meet people where they're at. What do you expect him to actually do with that advice? I never said I would give that advice. I said I received the advice and it changed how I acted. Yeah, but I feel like maybe I'm biased in my how much I love Felipe, but I feel like if I you reported to me and I just said be better, you would totally do it. I would. You would that's the best advice I've ever been given. You come out twice as awesome. I would. I take uh I've been I've been sliced six ways from Sunday by a doctor. I think it was uh Dr. Rachel. And one of the things Dr. Rachel told me, she's like, Felipe, everything that you hear motivates you to do better. I was like, Oh yeah, you just found yeah. it. We found it. So that's that's unique to me. That's part of my bias is my damage. We'll celebrate me some other time. Well, let me let me give away a chapter out of my book because I've got a chapter titled When It's Okay to Steal. And definitely every time anybody gives me anything, if it's not legal for me to steal it, that boy's gonna steal it. And that includes criticism and aphorism. So like that doctor gives you something that you can change, adjust, or steal as I worded it in here. Go for it, man. Go for it. Go for it. you heard from the you heard it from from himself and and also I think I heard that uh, in there is some love for me Jake I think I'm winning you over because you said you'd love to have me working for you <laughs> that's that's interesting but well, you're not meeting me where I'm at today you're not if you would agree to my position I do not agree to your position <laughs> I disagreement you're not meeting me where I'm at Felipe Jesse being all super Jesse Jesse I I will remember. Forever that you did not take a swipe. I'm your new nickname is going to be J Swiss. Yeah, J Swiss. <laughs> yeah, J Swiss. So Eduardo talking to J Swiss said uh, he likes his I, his take on that. <laughs> it's just damn it, Jesse. You're you have better content in the comments than we do on the video. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Jesse. He's J Swiss now. J Swiss. And we've got uh, Mark coming back in. Don't you borrow shamelessly. Yes, sir. I think just to just to come back and try to to go back and win over Doctor M because it looks like 
It looks like it's actually Jake by one single point. Don't be fooled by the size of that pin. That, that the pin, size of the point is still worth one. The size of the point could be shrunk down <laughs> at any time. <laughs> Dr. M. But I think, uh, Dr. M, you're a fellow William Edwards Deming fanatic. Look at that, Jake. I brought him I back. Know, I'm, you know, so he actually was against me for the Deming thing, but then joined me for this one. So I appreciate having a broad range of people in the world that we're not going to agree on everything. I That's how humans are, right? One of the things that I learned uh, from studying Deming, and Dr. M, you, you chime in because you've studied Deming as well, and you actually got to meet Deming while he was alive. As the Deming said, we have to get better at psychology. We have to get better at connecting with people. And Jake, I just don't see how you deciding by yourself to be charitable with people is the best thing for them. Meeting people where they are, it's just like on this map. If I'm trying to go visit Dr. M and if I move this to where I think he is in India, it's closer probably to about right, right thereabouts maybe. You have to understand you're talking to, what their motivations are. It's going to take work. You just can't come in like, like we, and you didn't give me your example, how you parachuted in and you affected a change. So I want to hear about a time you parachuted in and you didn't meet people where you at and it turned out great. Yes. So we can get, this will blend terms just a little bit because it's going to give you a good argument to fight me backwards on, but I'm parachuted in. The site that's on fire has no chance at winning, right? So step one is gather all the facts. Now, how I gather all the facts is really fun and different because I'm the funniest lean guy. I have a brand in place that I cannot be so serious. I can like, you know, talk about people, what they're having for lunch and just shoot the crap. You ask them about the football game and crap on whatever team they like. And <laughs> I'll start the conversation off by just showing that I'm a human, right? We'll connect on some mutual thing that I'm a human. Now you could, you could disingenuously say that's meeting people where they're at, but we're both human to begin with. I don't, I don't need to do anything to meet you there. Like we're both, we're both human to begin with. So I start the conversation by just showing them I'm a human, get that back from them. Then I clarify their problems and I incorporate their problems into the overall solution that gets the outcome I was parachuted in for. And usually meeting that too is a long-winded process. It's like a Chinese finger trap, if you will, where sometimes if you pull too much on one, you get less of the other, you know? But finding where those push and come together is the secret sauce that gets all the outcome after. Yeah, I'm going to counter that in just a second. I think Jay Swiss is trying to redeem himself. Blinded by y'all's biases, you fail to read my stance. I am neither being met where I'm at or experiencing any charity. Hashtag I win. Sorry, Jesse, J Swiss. You, you remain Switzerland. We secretly agree, but we need to look up what charity is because how it's like colloquially used is different from its operating definition. <laughs> Very complicated. So to counter your, your point before we go back to Dr. M, Jake, you're parachuted in, and I've been parachuted into projects in trouble too to turn them around. And sometimes like, hello people, I'm super biased as Jake said, not only do I love Deming, but I love construction scrum. And people have said, like, after being parachuted, like, Felipe, I'm surprised you didn't say that scrum was the solution to what this issue was. And I was like, exactly, because I'm meeting you where you are, which is like heaven to them, Jake. Because even though that I am prolific in this area and I've got expertise in other parts as well, it's not always the problem when we parachute in. Sometimes people need to just have permission to make some of the changes that they already know that would make things better. But due to the, the complications and the complexity of the job that they're in, they can't initiate and make a change. And they need just me to be there as an excuse or not just me, like there's nothing magical about me, but someone like myself, that's not forcing an agenda because oftentimes in organizations, when, especially when you're trying to turn something, something around, the typical management will want more reports more reporting, more communication, and just more of like how we got to this bad situation, which is in of itself not helpful. Jake, you and I both counterproductive. Yep. We both agree there, common ground right there. But unfortunately, I can't get the pin unless somebody comes to my rescue. Dr. M, are you coming back to my side? No. He understands us both. Both of us. Oh, time for his breakfast. And what he didn't meet Deming, he met Peter Drucker. No, not Deming. It was Peter Drucker. All right, Dr. M. 
I think that pin's going to stay for you, Jake, but I'm going to have to shrink it back down to its appropriate size. All right. I feel like we should have done this with Mark instead. He's been engaged the whole time, and I'd have a, I'd have a pin that encompasses all of Canada by now. <laughs> yes. It's so good. So I think sometimes, Jake, uh, you know, we parachute in or we connect with people like I know some things that that typically work in most situations based on my experiences, but I leave it open for the surprise of the people on the ground. Like we heard in some of the other comments uh, from people like the solutions are not trivial, but the way to allow them to, to come forward is where the asking good questions and giving people permission, sometimes magic can happen. And so that's my rebuttal to you, Jake. But I'm going to let you come come back at me one more time before we shut you down. All right. So we open up a new tab, pull up charity on Webster's Miriam Dictionary, Wikipedia, wherever you like. Okay. Well, I'm going to attack your specific scenario. You've got to you've got to do that while you got to talk and uh, react to what John's saying while I do that. <clears throat> I feel like your perspectives may be broken down into running a project and being a leader. Project support means meet where you are. Leadership supports growth and investment into the team. Yes and no. I think there's a lot of people where they say leadership that are just meaningless, feel good aphorisms. They're like, this is the thing you need to do to not be a boss, but be a leader. No, there's just generally good crap you can do for people. And leadership is kind of a non sequitur. And I don't accept both. I think that's, Meeting people where they are is feel good, as I'm going to get into as soon as he pulls up this definition. I think that he used it as a feel good phrase because it feels good, right? It gets the little dopamines and the serotonies or whichever chemical it is, not a brain doctor, to go, I feel good. But then what he really did is took a facts based approach, considering what the opinions and subjectivity the people gave and adjusted that into incorporating a solution. Yeah, and that's going to take us. We'll see if that's true or not. We'll go into the Q&A, and the first question is, what does charity mean when Jake's talking about charity? And this is what we've got uh, from uh, MiriamWebster.com. Jake, you check. There's four here. Which one are you talking about? Bullet point. Literally none of these. <laughs> <laughs> literally none thank you so much mark for uh hanging out with us good discussion mark's already he's like we're pulling up the dictionary thank I'm, you mark you call it you called it jake and you left it there that's the best way an audience could engage so thank you for that much yeah <laughs> so so that's not the definition let's go deeper into the actual hyperlink and see if we've got full here full definition of charity it's got to be here what you're talking about I want to go with number two for the for this section of this, and then also number four. So two and four are the ones I'm talking about. Benevolent goodwill toward or love of humanity mixed with a lenient judgment of others. And every decision we make, the sneaky little hint of judgment that goes, this is what we think of that person. And your first impression is actually 99% of that. So that's the core reason, the fundaments of why I think it's really bad to go meet people where they are. Because people with that advice in their brains, the first thing they're doing is they're going, let me hear, see, feel what I judge you for. And now in some lenient or good manner, sure, but to be applied positively. But that's actually what you're doing. Any assessment is a variety of judgment, positive, negative, neutral. You're looking at a person and saying this person is this way is a judgment. My counter argument is don't judge people at all. Accept facts and what's brought to you and make the most lenient judgment, the decision with goodwill towards humanity, you possibly can. I think that we've got some common ground there on this benevolent goodwill, love of humanity. I'm with you there. Lenient judgment towards others, absolutely with you there. The part where I'm not with you and we're still opposed is that accepting the facts. Because you come back to this, you're making this jump. And to show it, to show it on the map, like accepting the facts is like jumping the chasm from you know, Brazil all the way to Africa. Whereas like, uh, you know, it's not like this boot action here in Italy. This is a much smaller chasm to jump. And I think that and I found this to be the case more times than I can count that we're not always playing with the same deck of facts and the data. We, I think we saw that in the comments as well. Somebody said, who, who was that that talked about uh, getting, getting the facts on here or the data? I think it was Valerie. But Valerie said the data is great, 
and she's calling out the people. I think Valerie's on Team Felipe. Uh, I think she is. I think she's Team Felipe, but she hasn't put it in the chat. So, Ooh, that- put it in the chat, if your positions change, team, or if you just want to say I'm Team This or now and stay out of Switzerland, please. I'd love to see this blow up with black pins. Because we can stick it in people's face. Yeah. I have a little ground. I want to propose, Felipe. Consider okay. it very carefully. I'm listening. I'm going to adjust my statement to try and meet you somewhere in the middle and see if you attack it or we like where we land. All right? Okay. Determine what the people perceive as facts and make the most charitable choice, choice possible. That would work for me. That would that we just we just god, oh my god did we just find something? Well, you totally attacked my initial position, but I think we, did you, I think we met in the middle. <laughs> I think the Panama Canal did is what we did right there. Maybe. <laughs> oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, we did that. Uh, we don't have any Q and A from the people, the good audience, the good listeners, but we do have some some yeah. final feedback. Let's hear questions, from- comments. Throw it in here, guys. Yeah, John appreciated uh, what we said, what we brought to this lively conversation. And he, and he closed it out with this. Great conversation. Got to go. Have a great night, day, night, everybody. John? Yeah, thank you so much, John. Yeah, people, thank you for spending your time with us. We appreciate all of you. Be safe out there. Remember that uh, Jake's not always right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ended up with one additional pin, but it, it could be audience. It could be. Like if you were just testing 33 samples, you'd get different results, right? Like statistically, we know this, but I'm glad me and you found a middle ground of a, of a statement. We found, we 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 walked away from Switzerland and we found the Panama Canal and we connected. Goodbye, everybody. Very special thanks to my guest. I'm Felipe Engineer Manriquez. The EBFC show is created by Felipe and produced by a passion to build easier and better. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, everybody. Let's go build.